Thank you. Hello. Thanks for coming out. And as he said, I'm Ronan Brown. This is Mary Bergen. Yay. And this is, what do we call it? Music, more, more than music. And the idea of it is that I feel that nowadays it's all music and no chat. And this is all about having a mix of music and chat. I don't know, will you feel similar on that? Yeah, I, do. I think um, chat in, in sessions is as important, I think, as the music. Just the crack and having a bit of a joke and communication and uh, with, with each other, apart from the music, is, is to me, it's always so important anyhow. Um, I've had great sessions that, you know, with, with great musicians and very little chat and mm -hmm. other sessions with not very well-known musicians, but <laughs> loads of crack and loads of music. And I think I probably enjoyed the, the, the second one better, yeah. you know, because it was more camaraderie and whatever. So I, I do agree, I think, that chatting is, is very important. Just, I've just been reminded of, of uh, back in the 90s, going to Milltown Malbay and uh, a relation from England who had taken up the fiddle. I, I, I was there and I, I was heading out to see Peter O'Loughlin in Kilmaley and she said, can I come along? Can I come and meet Peter? I said, absolutely, come on. And we went in and we were drinking tea and chatting and everything grand as far as I thought. And then Peter got up and left the room for a minute and she hissed. We're here 45 minutes. You haven't spoken once about Irish music. It's, you're talking about farming and turf <laughs> and tractor engines. But, but, but that's what it's about. Yeah. I won't say her name. I don't even know if she's still playing the fiddle. But it's all of those ancillary things mm. around yeah. the music, which we have been lucky enough to have. Yeah. Because I suppose I, I, it's for me definitely, probably you, my... Yeah world of Irish music wasn't a commercial world. It was ordinary people playing music as part yeah. of culture. Yeah. And that's what I grew up with, you know, just going around the country, meeting uh, all the older musicians. I, I, um, I would kind of pick out a lot of the old fiddlers, actually, more than anything else. Now, a lot of the flute players as well, but yeah. I loved playing with some of the old fiddlers. Um, they had a special rhythm. Some of them now, they mightn't be great, they wouldn't have been great technically, but um, they had that gimp to the music. And again, having a bit of fun and the banter between people. I'd, I wouldn't, I was young at the time and I probably wouldn't have joined in. I wouldn't have had anything to add to it, and, but I was listening to all the crack and absorbing it all. And it was, it was, it was fun as well as, the music, you know, they took the music seriously, but great, great crack in, in, uh, among themselves, you know, characters, really, mm. you know. Well, what would be your favourite musical instrument? Is it the fiddle? Probably the fiddle, yeah. I think I'm there too. Apart from the whistle, I love the whistle. Apart from the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about that. Yeah, that, but I do. They're I the do ones we're married to, but the ones yeah. we dream of. Yeah, the, the fiddle, fiddle is lovely, yeah, I would say. Fiddle. Because on the fiddle, you can do anything. Mm. You know, you can be yeah. tender and you can be violent, gentle and loud, <laughs> whatever. You just can't yeah, create any mood. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Was there music in your house growing up? Yes, there was. Actually, my mother played the fiddle and my mm. grandfather, her, her father, played the fiddle. And uh, Were they from Dublin? They were from Dublin, yeah. My, my grandfather, he worked on the railway and he uh, often... He, he, they lived in Shankill and uh, the, the last train, he'd, he'd missed the last train going home at night because he'd be listening to some of the old uh, street pipers that, that uh, were playing and he was mad about the music and he'd, he'd walk the 20 miles home um, after listening to the, these, these pipers. And tell you about it. You'd, well, you'd no, I was, I was too young at the time. I wasn't... I wasn't uh, no, at that, that stage I, I wasn't born, at, you know, but um, he, he would tell his family, my mother like, you know, and they would, they would have known it. And, but he got them all trained classically and they played traditional music as well. 
So then on the other side, my father then, he played the, the melodian, and it was really, I suppose, his influence more than my mum, because my mum was busy with, there was five of us in the family, so the fiddle wasn't seen that often until we had family parties and whatever, then, then it would come out. And um, her brother played the piano and... Uh, and so when she'd bring out that fiddle, she'd be out of practice. But did that matter? No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. But they'd play all sorts of classical music as well and jazz. My, my uncle used to play a lot of jazz. And so there was loads of all the different genres of music mm. in, at our family uh, parties and things like that. And, you know, Jeanette MacDonald and all these people that'd be singing all those songs. And, you know, so there was a lot of big, you know, a different variety yeah. of music. And then we'd have the traditional side. And was, was there a radio and rec When you were young, I suppose records are... Oh, no, we didn't have any records. Real to real? Young. 78? No, 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 we didn't have anything. Cylinder? No, we had nothing. <laughs> so I actually... Choose harp? No, but I had to pick... If I heard a tune, I had to pick it up like... had to pick it up, like, very fast. One because, chance. Yeah, because I, I... And I was very fast at picking up tunes. I could pick it up. And still to this day, I'm... Not quite as fast now, because I, I don't make the effort, but I don't have to, because you, you have so many recordings and things. But at that stage, I was fast, because I, I wanted to learn those yeah. tunes. So There's that hunger when we were young. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was exciting, yeah. yeah. And that way, when you, you see an old musician for the first time, you get inspired by them. Yeah. You know, who, who did that to you when you were young? Well, I, I can't remember, uh, like I remember I used to be, uh, to go, now as I got a little bit older, we, we moved to Bootestown, I was living, we brought up in Shankill, and when we moved to Bootestown, there was a session in um, Black Rock, and Terry Holm was a blind whistle player, and Joe Liddy used to play the fiddle, Joe. and John, yeah. um, John Dwyer, the, the fiddler came, and uh, Kathleen Nesbitt used to come and different people. So I, I did hear good fiddling at that stage. And then I'd travel around and look at Tommy, Tommy Flynn and all, loads of people. I can hardly remember. You mentioned uh, Paddy Hill. Oh, Paddy, Paddy Hill, yeah, Paddy took lived. Took everyone under his wing. And he did. Pa actually, him. Paddy was in, very influential in, in bringing, uh, he brought Mrs. Crotty and Mrs. Harrington to our house in, in Shankill um, when I was, in, well, I moved when I was 12, so must, I must have been before 12. And, um, and they came out, and I remember that I was very impressed with them playing. And they were so encouraging to me. I must have been, can you imagine, like, the standard of my playing, and they were telling me that I was great. And <laughs> <laughs> but for them, it probably you were, because you were well, fresh. I don't know, because there weren't that many young people playing, I suppose, at that stage. And, uh, yeah. At what age did you start? Do I, I don't, do I don't know. know. I'd say I was about eight or nine. Yeah. Um, and we used to have these little set, more Sunday morning sessions with my father, and he'd play marches and polkas. He wasn't a great musician. He was from Kilkenny, but he had a good few polkas, but he loved the music, you know. But uh, He'd play a lot of marches and tunes, and uh, I'd pick them up like that. And just, what, I, to this day, if I, if I know a tune in my head, I can play it. I don't actually have to learn it on the whistle. Whereas, well, should that happened with us now earlier today. We're going to play <laughs> two whistles later. And you just learned it. And I learned it. I, I don't recognise it at all, <laughs> but I must know it. Yeah, I must. Oh, yeah. And that happens. And we've we've absorbed tunes that we don't yeah. know that we don't know we learned. Like it's just mm. they just appeared in our repertoire. From hearing them and then probably just joining in then when, yeah. we, when we had a grip of them. Tell us, do you remember, did the two women play together or on their own when they were in the house? Oh, they played together. Together? They played together, yeah. They had the constant and the fiddle. It's lovely. Yeah. Mm. And your parents didn't join in or anything? It was, no, no, no. They no. were listening? Oh, my goodness, no, no. These were stars, like, you know, they were... Yeah. It was such a treat. Really. And Paddy didn't play. Paddy, Paddy didn't, didn't play. Didn't At least I don't remember him playing. No, yeah. no. But the two of them played. Um, so it was. It was very good. And see, that's it. It's 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 about that. And you know, we were chatting earlier 
about that whole thing of wall-to-wall -wall tunes compared to you might play a tune and then you might chat for 20 minutes and another tune. Yeah. Whereas I remember in the, it was in the 1980s, it seemed to change and Irish music became, you know, it was like you were heading for a workout. <laughs> <laughs> and how many tunes you could play, how many times you could play them, how fast you could play them, how loud you could play them, and how small of a break you could take before the whole thing started again. <laughs> We're talking about which, when you play a tune, just to okay. prove that there's a reason why you're here, <laughs> other than talk. Okay, I'll try, um... And I'll listen. I'll try a couple of reels. Uh, I'll try uh, Big Pat's, um, Billy Brockers, and a tune I call Tony Lenans, but I think Tony denies any connection with it. <laughs> I think I probably heard him playing it, and that's... Mm -hmm. So effortless. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Mm. But isn't it, Cassio? I mean, the beauty and perfection in that, and it appears effortless. Of course, we know it's not effortless. It's easier in my own kitchen. <laughs> it's always Sitting easier. Up here, yeah. I can tell you. And the millions and millions of years that has gone into making that happen. I know. You know it's, it still doesn't get any easier playing in front of people, though. No. For some reason, that's. Um, no, I, I, I actually did find myself thinking, I've devised this whole thing so that I bring some poor victim up and you have to play on your own. I get to play with you, <laughs> but I don't have to play on my own. <laughs> That's oh. terrible. And yeah. I remember Peter O'Loughlin talking about the whistle. It's just, it's too simple an instrument. And there's nothing simple about this at all. Well, it was looked on as, a, um, and probably to a certain extent still looked at as a starter instrument in a lot of people's heads. But well, I hope you never move on to something else. <laughs> well, 
No, I'm going to stick at it and mm -hmm. because I, I like it. But um, I suppose it's easy to knock a tune out of the whistle, you know what I mean? It is a, 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 mm -hmm. an easy instrument, but then when you go into the, the detail of the techniques and things like that, uh, it, it can get a little bit more complicated and not complicated, but just the detail it makes, it shows how the detail makes a difference, really, you know. Uh, the way the blowing, the way one blows the whistle, it's not just a matter of blowing straight, you know, like that, which is what a lot of people do. Or a lot of people might go <laughs> from here and it can sound very broken up. So there's, there are little tricks that, that help to actually keep the flow going and that forward motion in the, mm. in the rhythm and things like that. So, yeah. And you have it in spades. I know well, it's not nice to accept compliments in front of people, but you do. Well, thanks. But um, I, I suppose through my teaching, I have learned things that I, I didn't know I was doing, you know. Because you had to explain them. Exactly, yes. yeah. And in the beginning, I remember a lot of my students used to say, what did you do there? And I'm saying, where <laughs> and what? And I actually didn't know. So it, it forced me into actually analysing what I was doing. And it, it, it has been valuable in, in, in helping other people to kind of get up and running and, you know, the finer details of, of the whistle playing. Yeah, because there's, there's always a choice of how much to put in, what not to put in. Yeah, well, what I say to in, my, in my workshops is like, to, when people are playing, like there's nothing right or wrong in, in music. I don't think there's nothing, if there's anything right or wrong, it'd be like saying, that painting is wrong. Like you can't say that, because it's not, it's really what pleases you. So. What I try to do in workshops or whatever would be to give maybe a different perspective on something and did you try this and how does that compare to you, you know, would you like, does that sound better to you or, you know, whatever. So by giving them a different perspective, it tunes, fine tunes their ears to hearing, hearing things in a different way. But not alone that, I think it opens their ears to actually hearing other people that they're able to say, that's what I'm looking for. But they wouldn't have seen that had they not been shown maybe a different way. Whereas, you know, people don't, uh, they, 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 if you only know something one way, it's hard to, to, to change. Whereas if someone shows you, no, you could do it like that, or turn it around, or do that, or blow it dif differently, or do this fingering or different, or whatever. But you're and, showing that to people, you're giving them that, option, are you giving them that route? Yeah. But you, did you have that? Did somebody give it to oh, you? Oh no, I, I didn't, I had no teacher, I just, I... So why do you know these things? You I didn't know it until I started to teach, but I just, I just did it, I just, I just, it just came naturally to me, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I suppose in our it's just from listening, listening. Listening, that's what I was going to listening. say, in our lifetime. Yeah. It, you know, there, there were, I, I put you on a pedestal here now. There were a few people who, in the less common instruments, and the people I'm thinking of now are whistle, you, concertina, Noel Hill, flute, Matt Malloy. The fiddle and the pipes, there are too many bloody pipers and too many bloody fiddle players. <laughs> so you can't really pick who was the young spark. But each of the three of you, you, Noel, and Matt, were like a young spark that came out. And although you loved the less perfect music, the less perfected music, you appeared to everyone to perfect it. And when, when people, and I, I mean, I was young hearing all three of you, you're all slightly, everyone, everyone I love is always just a tiny bit older than me. And being amazed because I loved the people who weren't technically brilliant. But I was blown away by how you could play with such authority, such force and such perfection and never fall off your instrument. And you were it. Yeah, well, we, we, 
I suppose there was you know, deep, had to, had to there's passion. It, like we wanted to, we wanted yeah. to play. We were it, like, it, it was like a bug, really. Like once you started, there was no going back. Like I remember at school, at my in secondary school, like I didn't dare tell anyone that I played the whistle. Oh, it was yeah. just a no-no. But at the same time nothing would have stopped me playing <laughs> like regardless I, I just I couldn't I couldn't not play but it, it wasn't cool at that time we like, should do know. a survey of all the but I, so critically many acclaimed people. musicians how many of them admitted to what they were they doing didn't, most people None were like did. me most people were, they didn't say no. it uh, Pure but, horror. but the bug was so strong you know and you just there was no there was no going back like it's <laughs> yeah. uh, and, but to me, what attracted me to the, the older musicians was the, the rhythm they had. Because the, to me, the rhythm is everything. It's everything. And everything after that is the icing on the cake. But the ornamentation and all that can be got around. Mm. But you can't get around the rhythm. If you haven't got the, the rhythm, that's the secret, you know, and to me, on the whistle, it's the way you blow to keep that flow going, that forward motion going and the rhythm, I think, and the, and also the punctuation, obviously. Where you put those stops in, yeah, and then yeah. you've got the breaths, the breaths become a form the breaths, of punctuation yeah, too. Yeah, and I, I actually, a lot of the time, I would take breaths that I don't need, I use it for the give Ahead and Like, I'll, very often, I'll take a breath after the first note, which you know, <laughs> I don't need it, but it's, um, you know, it just gives it that little kick forward. And yeah. And there was something that I remember Catherine McAvoy doing, where each time she would take a breath, the note after the breath would be in the second octave. Yeah, she was, would Tansy never, would do that a lot. Tansy well. did yeah. that, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And those things that, if you're looking with a critical mind, you're saying, well, that's wrong and I'm going to weed that out. And make my music perfect. No, it can be very effective. No, it can be very effective. But you know, another thing, and I, I say this to a lot of players, whistle players, and probably flute players as well, something that can actually make a difference is, and it sounds so simple, like if you clip the breath, like say coming to the, to coming to the end of a phrase that you're going to take a breath, if you clip the breath like, mix. The, the actual residue of going ah, is so important. It sounds so simple. If you go, ah, it just, in the tune, it'll give that ah, Now, there's no music happening here. This no, is this is taking, just a breath. You're not taking a silent breath. You're going, ah. it's, No, you're, you're going, you, but you cut the last note with the breath. You go, ah. Is that in or out? Are you breathing in or out there? Out. You'd be going, out. out like, ah. Okay. Ah. Whereas... But the, the little residue of the breath. No, I'm, gonna no, write, I'm going very technical. I'm going to write this no, all no, down now no, when no. I go back. And anyhow, I'm going to no, bring that's my, maybe going a bit too my, technical. My but cool anyhow, whistle on <laughs> but just to show how important that yeah. part is, is actually quite important to let the note ring to the end and then take your breath rather than clipping. Yeah. yeah. And you discover those things by just playing and listening. Do you ever? Mm. Did you ever? When you were young, did you record yourself? And I didn't back. have a recorder. No. I didn't even... So how I... did you know when you were any good? <laughs> Shall we wait till I tell you, even when I started Third On, when we started the, the group Third On, I had no recorder. And this is back in the, the, um, the 80s, early 80s. I had no recorder. I was using a Fisher-Price, the kids' Fisher-Price tape recorder <laughs> for to work out all the harmonies and everything for the tunes. That's a fact. Isn't that great? That's all I had. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you no. never did, so you policed yourself from within. Because I found yeah. I, I, I could play, and I think it's great, but I record it, and I listen back and I go, oh, no, that's terrible. And I'd have to fix all the things that were wrong. But you were fixing everything. I, I never thought about it. I never thought like, ah, it was good or bad. I didn't think. I yeah. just did it. It's like the elephant sculptor who was asked... How did he make such great sculptures of elephants? And he was like, I don't know, I just get the big block of stone, I guess the hammer and the chisel, cut away all the bits that don't look like an elephant. That's it. <laughs> That's what you were doing. <laughs> I was taking photographs of the elephant and looking at it. 
cruel to yourself. Cruel, cruel, pure cruelty. Will we play something together? Yeah, we'll do the pipes. Just Let's in case go. anyone thinks that these are just window dressing, which is what they are. I'm going to play. Uh, Lorna's pipes are in B, so I'm going to use a B whistle. And we're going to play. Uh, Carlin's oh, Draft. Oh, Carlin's Draft, right? Yeah. And see now, am I anywhere in June? No. What am I up to? They were in tune when I bought them. It's always they're either sharp or flat. Gentle tune, isn't it? Mm. I got that one, yeah. Yeah. You made that record. How did that come out? How did that come to be the first that first Fad August Dawn record um, in nineteen what seventy nine? Seventy nine, yeah. Seventy nine. Um, I, I tell us about the. I think the it reasons. was um, me, Hollow Hine, or I um, instigated that through yeah. Gray. I don't know whether it was Gray Lynn came to me first, I don't, I don't actually remember yeah. how it came about, but uh, I know Michal O'Hein was involved in it, and he, because I knew nothing about recording, I was a complete How many greenhorn. months did you spend in the studio? How many months? How many months? I, I recorded the whole thing in one day. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I, sort of knew that. I, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe it myself. I know, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I probably would have, 
tampered with it had I known anything. Like what I know now, I probably wouldn't have let things go and all sorts of things. What I don't do you know. think of it now? Have you, have you heard it recently? I have listened to it uh, because it I okay? had to listen to it recently. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't listened for ages. Um, um, but some of my students wanted to learn some of the tunes and I couldn't remember some of the Which order. Ones they were, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so I what did you back. feel then when you listened to it? Was it, um, was it traumatic? It's, it's always a little bit traumatic, yeah. You always hear the things that you think might, be, might have been different, you know, that I, I would do different now. Like, but at the same time, that's, it's not fair in a way to even no. judge that because I'm glad I'd be doing things different now because otherwise I wouldn't have developed, you know, I'd have been stuck in the world. And there are things group. that you're looking back with your now eyes and heart at what you did then. But when you were listening, did you hear anything? Were you reminded of anything that at the time you had really not wanted to be let out? And you still remember it now? You are, are, no, none of that no, exists. no, I've, I've let, I know that's all gone. No, that's great. Yeah, no, I Let don't. Bygones be bygones. Yeah, no, it's, it's what's done is done. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm happy enough with it now, to be honest. When I listened back, I was kind of surprised at. First of all, I was surprised at the speed of it. I didn't realise I was playing so fast then, yeah. which is interesting. But you know, when you hear old musicians, and everyone now thinks old musicians played, you know, old, worn out, dead musicians played slow. They didn't. No, they didn't. They were I mean, rock think of all Patsy Dewey and all those. They did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and all the fiddlers, yeah. Incredible. Mm. So you were surprised at how fast? I was, yeah, that was the first thing that kind of. But you're still a bit of a speed demon. Am I? In a good way. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I, I, maybe when I'm... You don't see it that way. I don't. I don't. I, I, I don't yeah. think I play that fast now. At least I didn't think I did. Maybe, maybe you say... I, I'm... But in a good way, you know. And I, I'd, um, I, I think I find myself slowing down a lot. I, I'd say I think, I think I'm slow. You down feel you're slow. Maybe we, we, all, we all feel we are, but we're not. Mm. I feel I can save with the tune if people are playing slower. I, if, yeah. if, if people play too fast, I, 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 I want it to be. I want to save it a bit more, and so that's the reason I would be saying to slow it down. What do you? What do you do? What do you say? What do you suggest to a, a technically proficient musician who comes to a class of yours, who's flying but is obviously. Not out of control, but lacking the internal rhythm of the tune. How do you how do you try to bring them into the oh, centre? Like what they get a telling off. <laughs> I know they don't know, but I I would point out that they're missing the, the the vital ingredient of that strong sense of rhythm, you know. And and if they I, say to you, well, I don't care. I'm enjoying oh, it. Oh, well, if they... Uh, but to be honest... No, I wouldn't no. say out. No, I'd, I, to be honest, I, I... Everyone can do whatever they want, really. As I said, nothing is right or wrong. That's good, yeah. I'd only be... If people come to me, usually they're just looking for a, a bit of guidance, like, you know, they mightn't be happy with their playing. So I will guide them in, in the way that I think that would benefit them most, like, you know, and... Often I'd say to people, take a big step back and if you take that step back and work on the detail and the quality of that playing at a slow, or as an easier tune, less ornamentation, just the bare bones and just get that feeling into it. And then you take even a massive leap forward then back again, do you know what I mean? So it's, it's worth... It's, it's worth taking a, say, a deeper look, just going yeah. deeper and, and, and um, breaking things down and taking a look at what's actually happening and why something would work better or why something else might work better than that, you know. So it'd be just... And, and it's, it's, an ex, it's an adventure into the tune and it brings people into the tunes and it, rather than just being something out there when you bring it into, when they're playing from their heart, 
it's a totally different feeling from playing from their head. And that I would always encourage my students to play from their heart. And, you know, not how to get carried away. How, how do they find their heart? How do you show them um, the tricks? What did I say? I've Jesus, broken you. I don't know. You have you've caught me there now. I don't know. <laughs> Well, well it, it should be getting. No, I tell you what it is. It's opposite. getting. To, it's, it's getting to the stage that they're, they're able to play it with that ease. That there's no head work. They're not thinking it yeah. through. They're not. So it's the opposite of They're the, not of afraid the of the tune. They're able to play it. That they're feeling the tune. They're not. Yeah. It's not coming from up here. It's. It's. They're able to lose themselves in the tune. Basically, I think that's what I would say to people and to, to feel it, just get into it, you know, and not be, never try to impress, because if you're trying to impress, it's coming from the wrong space and you're not going to impress because you're not going to hit the other person's heart, whereas if it's coming from your heart, at least you have some chance of it hitting their heart. You look at Michael, yeah. Michael Russell, who was, appeared to be one of the most simple players and... <sighs> He wasn't at he, all, no. The whole world fell in love with him. Yeah, yeah. Because he played from his heart. He from just, his heart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I have a yeah. little club. There are three members in it. Michael and Tommy Wreck on the pipes and Paddy Keenan on the pipes. Who The three of them are appear to be playing so simple, such simple music. But it's not, because mm. it's all about the note length and where the gaps are. Yeah. Each one of the three of them are quite staccato. Yeah. But not Andy Conroy staccato. Oh, bim, yeah, bim, bim, bim. Was... It's, it's that there are demarcation lines between the beginning, the length, and the end of every note. And the, the, then from that note to the next note. This is microscopic stuff. But they had it. Yeah. And I don't know how much work they put into it. Maybe not I'd say none. You see, yeah, that's the thing. I think when the more you think about things and try to do things, the less effective it is. Whereas if yeah. it happens, you know, just let go, let it flow through you rather than try yeah. to. And that think. sort of music touches the soul of people who don't know anything about music. Yes. Whereas super duper kaja technical stuff. Just your brain glazes over. Yeah, yeah. No, it. And somebody's it, showing off. Yeah, it do, it doesn't it doesn't get through. Like it's it, it's uh, it is an interesting one, all right. Oh. Mm. Well, I'm setting you up now. I'm putting again, putting you yeah. on the pedestal, but. No, you, but I think it's important too. for 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 <clears throat> young people, and you can see it around. A lot of the young people have that feeling, you know, that they're 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 playing from inside yeah. out rather than trying to, you know, and it's just so lovely to see it. I was just saying to Ronan earlier that um, I launched one of the CDs of uh, Pori Keane and the group that he's playing with now and the, the boys and such, they were playing such lovely music, but what was gorgeous about it was the crack they had on the stage with among each other, which was so entertaining and it a lot of the time that's missing from performances, the, the uh, connection with the audience and they were pulling the audience and having fun and fun with each other and it was it was just a pure delight and that's what, it's just brilliant to see the young people playing like that, you know, and, and, a, and having that fun. There's a real bunch of them around these oh, days. Oh, there's loads of them and a lot of the young people now, they have that and that sense of fun and camaraderie and it's just delightful to see. Yeah. Mm. I was getting quite bored, but now I'm happy. <laughs> There's something to listen to. I don't have to listen to our lads anymore. <laughs> Will yeah. you play something else for us, um, please? Wait, let's see. Will I try a slow air? That'll be lovely. This um, air is on Bíntian Lochra. Uh, it's kind of based on the version that Darroch O'Cahan, who is, is one of my favourite Chanel singers, it's just kind of based on his version. I wouldn't say it's it's exactly that, but.
Something you mentioned earlier, and my two children, Dermot and Ellie, were recipients of it, which is your fabulous teaching skills. And you've been flat out teaching in Connemara and particularly in Spiddle for decades now. Long time now. Longer than we would care to remember. Yes. Do you love doing that? I do. I actually love teaching because I, I love the satisfaction that people get out of, out of playing and, and when, they, when they get a grip on it. And, you know, some of the adults will say to me, um, it's like meditation. It's, it's when, I'm, when I'm playing, I'm just in the zone. You know, they're just playing. And these would be people just playing at home on their own. They, they weren't, they're not playing out in sessions necessarily. Like they'd, a lot of them would just enjoy playing. When they're in that moment, are they, are they playing from their heart or are they actually also thinking of all the things that you've said to them? Well, they probably are, but that, yeah, they probably would be a lot of the time. Which yeah. aids in But at the same time, it's just that, that giving them that focus and, yeah. and allowing themselves to hear what they're doing, you know, and because I'd be saying to them to listen to, rather than focusing on what you're doing, hear what you're playing. You know, because that's a different feel to it altogether. When you when you can get your mind out of doing, and that's the familiarity, I suppose. But that's because you had no tape recorder. It down. What? That's because you had no tape recorder. <laughs> if I want to hear what I'm playing, I record myself. Yeah. Well, I pop out. <laughs> no, I do sometimes say to them to record themselves. If you know, to hear if they're doing something that they they think they're doing but they're actually not doing it, you know, that kind of a way. So I would say to people, listen and just see, can you hear yeah. what I'm talking about, what I'm asking you to do, you know, and things like that. But um, So I do love the teaching, and I've spent the last number of years working on a three-part tutorial for learning the, the, the whistle, which um, the Arts Council kindly helped to... Um, encourage me to do, let's say. Yeah. Um, and I presume that has a lot more than whistle. It's about Irish music in general. It's, it's about Irish music in general. And actually, the last book now, I, I did a section on uh, an introduction to slow airs. Oh, great. Um, and it's funny with slow airs, because I wasn't always interested in slow airs. I couldn't, I, didn't, I wasn't, it did, they didn't grab me when I was younger. I was more interested in the, the faster tunes. That's very common. Possibly, but I'll tell you what changed my me was I heard Willie Clancy playing. I was in Croke Park, and I heard Willie Clancy playing a low flat set of pipes, and he played in the Connerys. I will never forget it. I was actually my mum used to say to me, "Oh, I got stuck to the ground when I heard that," but that actually happened to me. I actually yeah. couldn't move. I was, I was absolutely. Like a statue, I couldn't move. And what was happening in Croke Park that he was? Oh, it was with? back in the. Now I'm giving my age away, but it was back in the. I think 1966 that the uh, the. That uh, they were up. The, there was no, no. There was a pageant for the. Uh, it, for the. Uh, 1916. For the 50th anniversary. Yeah, and uh, that they played. We we were actually playing in as part of the whole pageant thing, but but when we were rehearsing, they they played Willie Clancy and. That was the and end so you of the heard the Connerys and you were transfixed. Absolutely. And from yeah. then on, I went, I, like, I just went into the air then and started to, 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 to listen to them. will have that effect on people, won't he? What? He does have that effect on people playing slow airs. Oh, yeah. yeah it, was, it was lovely. It was but lovely like but it was just such a, a moment for me that yeah. I, up until that moment, I wouldn't have been taken by slow airs and... It just changed everything for me, so it was, it was interesting. And when you were playing there, I could hear, I could hear Darak singing that. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I love the Shannon singing now. I mean, yeah. goodness, yeah. But Darak, to me, was so special. And Nicholas Tobin, I love yeah. Nicholas. And two very different singers. Yeah, very, very different, but I just... The old, old recordings of Nicholas in his younger days, particularly, like, mm. lovely, lovely. 
Mm -hmm. And so with the teaching now and these books, where, where are you? What I've done, actually, they're done out in lesson form. And I, I, I go through, I go right from very beginner to professional. Like the last one now, the book three is advanced to professional. Book one is a, a beginner to intermediate. And then the second book is intermediate to higher intermediate. Like, And it's a, a sequential book. A se sequential lessons, uh, and I take one technique in each lesson, and we work on that through exercises and whatever, and explanations, and then we put that into specific tunes that I've handpicked for that particular lesson, and then we go on to the next lesson, I introduce another technique, we build on that, and then we learn new techniques, and then there's tunes then to a certain amount of tunes that they have to concentrate on those techniques. So. It's, there's nothing new, nothing hard, because it's, it's step by step by step, gradually going through all the different uh, techniques and the blowing and how to get the, the rhythm and God knows what. And do the same tunes appear over and over no. again? No, so there are no, new tunes all new coming tunes, in all the time. Um, but just with the, the, the purpose of trying to incorporate the different techniques that we'll mm. be doing. So it's just building up all the way along. So yeah, and you know, we both know, because we were talking about it earlier, our, our own bugbear about somebody going to learn a new tune each week, and they don't do anything by developing that tune, they just, next week it's another new tune. Yeah, it's a pitfall that people can, you it's know... Very easy to fall into. It, yeah. That teachers can fall into in a way that they have the expectation that the parents want them to do a tune every week and whatever, and... To me, it's a bit of a mistake because mm. it, the children particularly can end up with notebooks of tunes and they can't play any of them, like, do you know what I mean? And whereas my motto is stick with something until you can, can get a grip on it. And then that stands to you for the next step. And on, I have, each book has CDs and I'm talking, like I'm talking to you, like say, let's try bar three or let's try whatever and we'll work on that and so that they're able to break things down. I'm showing them how to break things down, oh. break it down so that they, there's nothing complicated and that it all f falls into place, you know. So it's, it was a lot of work, I have to say. Well, but, to it, but it is my life's work because I've been doing it so long. I know yeah. I knew what to do. I was to about do. to belittle you and say, but you had all the work done already. You just recorded it. But it wasn't. You had a no, lot of planning it, to I do. know. There was a lot, it to a lot of work right. in yeah. it. Like, yeah, to put it down into a book yeah. and to have it concise as well. And Derville Stondon was so helpful to me in making it more concise. Like, you know, and she'd hold me up, you know, you're waffling there or you're, you know what I mean she'd and we're good at that uh, no but you know that she, she'd condense it yeah, for me and yeah. or suggest things and it was very you know it was good yeah I think as I said earlier you need to set up a school for teachers <laughs> that's a dangerous I one I know yeah yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I do. We'll we won't go there no we'll see will we play something together okay let's right Let's do the, the two I've, jigs that we were going yeah, to. Yeah, well, just thinking about the tunes that you you want to you want to play tunes well and not to have a million tunes. And when we were sitting outside there earlier trying to think of what to play, both of us were mute. And we both know millions of tunes, but we didn't have a whole pile <laughs> of things ready to go. You know, so we just played. Things came up. Exactly. So what are these again? The cow that ate the blanket and the one the mist, that I never heard before. The mist covered mountain, yeah. How does it go? You start okay. and I'll follow you in. Come in.
lovely, lovely, lovely. Would you play another piece of something? Um, okay. I'm okay. sick of talking. I want to hear you play. Play a couple of reels. Um, the Dairy Maid, uh, the Laurel Tree, and I think, I believe, the New Policeman. The New Policeman. Solo playing, that is just so fabulous. I, I, I have. I was just thinking. I haven't played actually on my own for a long time. I usually have either a bower on or a yeah. bazooki or something, yeah. and it's a different story. <laughs> there's, there's, You're no, there's nobody to cover from me. exactly. No, but mm -hmm. because of that, you can also sway it a little bit your own way. I suppose. And yeah. You have to create your own rhythm. Oh yeah. Mm. You know, you might you might create a little less of that when you have accompaniment. Yeah, get lazy. It's not even lazy, but it's not needed. You know, I, and I found when I was playing with you that I was taking little gaps and breaks because you were covering stuff, <laughs> and 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 I loved I loved playing with you, but I love listening to you more. It's just it's gorgeous. There was, there was a thing I have, have you know, you, you as a child maybe you say, would I prefer to be deaf or blind? You give yourself these impossible choices. And my impossible choice has always been 
you are two things. You can listen to music for the rest of your life, but you can never play it again. Or you can play music for the rest of your life, but you can never listen to it again. To somebody else. <laughs> uh, which do you pick? Do you get the question? Yeah. Which would you pick? Oh, God, Ronan, don't... Don't put me on the spot. Don't, exactly. <clears throat> I'd have to think about that. Well, I know what I'd pick. I, and I think no, I know what I want, you'd pick. I, would list, I want to listen to other people. I would. Yeah. I think that's it. Mm. Yeah. I suppose you'd have to put in an extra thing that... I don't mind if I never play again, as long as I can think the music. But if you took that away too, that yeah, might but, be hard. <clears throat> but playing is a way that is food for the soul as well. Your well, own soul, so you know. But this isn't a nice that. choice. This isn't no. choice one is good and choice two is better. This is bad and badder. <laughs> Trust yeah. you to be thinking of these things. <laughs> but that's it. It's listening. Listening is mm. where it's at. I, I yeah. can't get enough ah, listening. Yeah. It's yeah. fabulous. No. And do you play at home? Rarely. Why is that? I'm the same. It's, I was saying to you earlier, I took these out. Now, the reason is that I keep a little sponge, a, a damp sponge in the case, but I took these out last week to record something and there was mould growing in them. <laughs> Any pipers in the house? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a disgrace. Yeah, <laughs> it's a disgrace. But it wasn't actually from lack of use. It was, because, it was because there was a sponge in there, with wet, a wet sponge. You know, cool. It wasn't that long since I played them. But uh, yeah. I, I felt yeah. it, I was aware. But you're the same. You I, 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 I'd play a low whistle, rather. You know, I'd pick out some of the low whistles that I'd have, and I, I might play and that. that. An Just F sometimes. An F or a G. Yeah, some size. of the low, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because these. And things... sometimes I would pick that out. Sometimes I would pick it out. Feel like playing a few tunes and just. But even be standing your face, waiting. Aren't they? No, it's just even st and standing waiting for the kettle to boil. Like I, I, I'd, and then I get oh God, remember that tune? Or I'd, I'd start. I suppose what it triggered would I'd start humming a tune and then I'd go for the whistle and. You so know, the trick so would be to leave a whistle. Line. I the I say that to all my students. One leave a whistle. Kettle lying around because you're more likely to pick it up if it's, if it's there rather than having to rummage for it or whatever, you know. It's just, and short, frequent practices as, yeah. as always is better and you'll make more progress rather than, than one long practice, yeah. I think. Um, you, you wouldn't would make more progress. What's your favourite room in the house to play in? In which to play? Never finish with the preposition. Hmm? Which is your favourite room uh, yes, in which to play? I play in the kitchen sometimes, or, or I play, I have a kind of a sunroom, I play in the sunroom, there's a nice sound. Yeah. Mm. But the bathroom actually is lovely. That was <laughs> actually the correct answer I was waiting for. Yeah, yeah. it's the bathroom, yeah. that's a lovely sound. It's the one, yeah. 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 But though those three rooms you mentioned, they all have that thing yeah. of reverberation. Yeah, of it is a reverb, I suppose. And yeah. we were sitting inside in, the, in what they call the parlour here, we were playing, and we came here then to do the sound check, and because the carpet is here, and the curtains, I suppose, the behind, yeah. It, it, it does deaden the sound it a little bit. Yeah. 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 It is interesting. The, well, playing a in a church is lovely as well, like the sound is great. Come here, before we finish, will you play one more, then we play one together, and then we'll send you home. Um, what do we see? Well, I do, I do a hornpipe. Hornpipe. Um, I do the, the old... Plains of Boyle and the Shaskeen. The Shaskeen Hornpipe? Yeah. I think that's what it's called. I mean, okay. no, I'm looking forward to this. I would never question anyone if I, about the name of a tune because I'm, I'm, I'm always hanging in by the neck, skin of my teeth. So this, this is a, a version. There's lots of little things that I've learned from, I've heard from different players. I think Willie Clancy probably put in a few of these little things are not all my own variations but I like this horn by band. It's just a common tune and mm. I like it.
Thank you. Come here, before we go, does anyone have any pent up burning questions they need to ask Mary? Nothing too hard, anyhow, I hope. <laughs> Looks like we've covered it all. We're okay. Mary. Damn. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, do you ever play for dancers? How, how do you change when. How do you play for dancers? I actually find it difficult to play for dancers. Um, some people find it easy. I, I don't. Um, I, get, I think I get mesmerised by some of the, the intricacies of the footwork that, I, that it kind of throws me off my own sense of rhythm. Like it's, it, even though they're in time, but it's just, it knocks me out. I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't, wouldn't be that confident playing for dancers. Um, I'd be afraid of losing it and <laughs> letting them down. So it, it's, not, it's not that easy to play for dancers. Shandos dancing is probably different. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd have no problem playing for Shandos dancing, but some of the other, um, the... Um, other, oh, sets, set dancing, you mean, like... Um, well, yeah, you know, when people go for dancing as a kind of popular community activity. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like this... I, I, you're not talking about solo dancing. No, no. no. Oh no, I, I'm talking about solo dancing. When I when I'm playing for some solo dancing, not the Shando style, uh, I, that's where I find it difficult. Playing for dancers, I'm inspired. I just, it's great. It, I just, it gives me a lift. Yeah, I used to love. I used to play with the Green Lynn and Kelly Band years ago. We play in the Clarence Hotel nearly every weekend, and we play for the set dancers. And oh, sure, it was marvelous. I mean. It's great, yeah. It was, that's where it all comes from. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. No, the set that's dancing. Oh, that's game, different. Yeah. Different. No, it's just the other, the other dance that they can put in so much intricacy into their footwork that it it knocks me off my own. And as a musician, you have to play at a quarters. A lot of the time, you'd have to so play. They can do yeah, all this so that, yeah, and it's 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 an unnatural yeah. uh, way of playing for me. So yeah, I would find that difficult. Uh, mm. Yeah, I wouldn't dare. Anybody else, anything? Awkward silence. Well, no. if not, shall we wrap up? Right. So thank you to thank everybody. Thank you very much. Who, thank you to, for coming. Thank you, thanks very much. And thank you, Mary, yeah. for thanks. being so open and thanks. Thank full you. of information, fascinating information. Yeah. yeah, and thank you to the to the hall, to the committee, and all of that. Fair play to everybody. Yeah. Niall, thanks Sounds for the sound, good. and Shane, and Ian, and Davy, and D David, and uh, that's it. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. We'll play, we'll we'll play a tune on the, with the pipes, isn't it? We're, yeah, we're going to, because we're, we're living in Spittle, this is a kind of a, it's nearly known as a Connemara uh, set of tunes. It's on Rogradu. The piano on one and pointing or after. Yes. So it's in. Am I in tune with him? Actually, if you're nice, it'll be by the time we're Sunday, finished. Sunday. Ah. Good enough for jazz. <laughs>